case 9. Okay. All right. So for this case, I think this height will help with that with it too. Um, there you can see kind of some skeletal muscle in it, and, um, and makes you think that you might be on the eye with some of the follicles as well. Yeah, good. And there's a skeletal muscle right here with the peripheral nuclei. We can't really see the striations very well. Oh, here we can. There's some striations. So yes, near the eyelid is a good place to have skeletal muscle up in the dermis. And then here's the cells that are in the dermis. And then those cells, you can see they're kind of cellulating. Um, it looks like there's some lipid inside, and so this would kind of make you think that the last one. Yeah, very good. They're foamy histiocytes, or xanthoma cells, uh, histiocytes that have little bubbles of lipid in them. And uh, sometimes it's a little hard to tell if a histiocyte is foamy, and lipid vacuoles, or if it's granular, there can be a little bit of overlap between those patterns. The thing that helps me is like foamy cells actually have like actual discrete little clear bubbles. And if you, it's a little hard to see on this scan, but they often bump and indent into the nuclear membrane uh, because they're lipid. So they're little bubbles, little spherules that are not dissolvable in water. So they're gonna push everything out of the way, including the nucleus or the, the, the rest of the cell. So from low power, xanthelasma doesn't look real exciting, right? Because it, the cells are kind of pale, so their cytoplasm blends into the background. But you can see when you go closer, they really are like a bunch of histiocytes trickling in between the collagen. And they, they generally kind of preserve the dermal structures here. They just fill the spaces in between. They don't really destroy or push out of the way any normal uh, structures. There may be a little bit of lymphocytic inflammation, but in general, uh, xanthelasma is, is usually almost purely foamy histiocyte with very minimal inflammation or fibrosis or any other change, as opposed to some other things in the xanthomatous and granulomatous categories. And then these are on almost always on or around the eyelid, the periocular area. And uh, this is associated in a, about half of patients with xanthelasma have uh, hypercholesterolemia, I think is usually what's associated. I think it can also be seen in other uh, lipid abnormalities like hypertriglyceridemia. But about, about half of people have hypertriglyc or hypercholesterolemia, excuse me. So, uh, so uh, I, I, for some reason, I actually thought it was higher than that. I thought it was much more strongly associated, but it's about 50-50. I just read uh, last night to double check on that. So in any case, people with xanthelasma probably should get their lipids checked if they haven't. Okay.